Hi, my name is Neka. Welcome back to our series on uh, Capstone Project. Um, at the time we left off, we were going to demonstrate code. So um, what I will do is twofold. I will demonstrate my implementation and I would highlight areas that I think are of importance um, based on the difficulties and the challenges that my classmates faced. Um, like I said earlier, we would focus more on the GUI, how the GUI is linked to the logic since um, the uh, extraction of data part was uh, already uh, carried out in a previous uh, pre presentation. And so if you were to click on um, activate um, city from menu, I will pick uh, Singapore to Rome because I know there is a lot of data just like in real life. Uh, there are a lot of cities, a lot of airports, a lot of airlines, uh, but again, depending on your selection, uh, the information you have might be limited. And city two is Rome. And so uh, we've done city from city two, and now we are the customization screen where we're going to customize our selection. So um, radio buttons have a default value. So it defaults to the first item. Uh, we're going to select all airlines, and uh, we'll leave all the other selections the same. We have the option, like we explained in the previous presentation, to select all flights, earliest, cheapest, or quickest flights. We'll be selecting all flights. And when we do that, uh, we would have our report. Now, just like in any real life application, the objective of the report is to provide as much information as is possible. Uh, because the report screen is quite different from uh, the input screen, what I've tried to do in my report is to provide as much information as I can on the selections made by the user. Uh, this would enable the user uh, make a decision, do we keep this report, do we go back and make uh, other selections. So if we look at the heading here, of course it says my name, uh, this states the time the report was generated, uh, this is not instant time. Uh, the time is the time of time where the server is located. Okay, so um, if we were to look at the first rule, this tells you the button that was pressed or flight. If we were to select cheapest flight, the cheapest flight button uh, will be displayed here. And then we have information on uh, the airline. We've selected all airlines. You could easily have selected any other airline listed, United, Singapore, Lufthansa, and so on. Uh, we have uh, we selected daytime flights. Uh, we selected uh, a departure city and a destination city. Now, like I said, to all intents and purposes, the table we have is similar to the one in a previous project. However, because of the requirements of this project, I added extra information in the flight time column. If you look closely, you see D. And then if we scroll down further, we have an explanation of the information on the table. And so we have here, D stands for a daytime flight, while N stands for night flight, nighttime flight. This makes a lot of sense because if we look at the information we have here, we are saying that the number of records searched is 17. So we have 17 flights from Singapore to Rome, of which 8 fit the criteria we are interested in, which is daytime flights. And um, so if we were to go back and make another selection uh, and select uh, overnight flights, then we would have uh, the number of records we would display would be 17 uh, less 8. Uh, in fact, to demonstrate that, we could go back and run the application again and select the same cities and leave everything the same except change from same day arrival to overnight flights. And then we would see here 9 because obviously 17 minus 8 gives us 9. And these are all nighttime flights. Uh, this shows the flight time the departure time and the arrival time. Now, I would like to draw your attention to these because this is the basis on which um, the other buttons were created. Um, we have an option for nighttime or daytime, and so we filter out the daytime and the nighttime flights and uh, pick, we, uh, make a selection based on the radio button that is checked. Um, 
uh, when we say the cheaper the quickest flight we are looking at the flight time also and so um, in our code at least what I have done is um, because um, all the flights so, uh, some of the flights all have the same time like this is three hours and this is three hours we'll simply select um, the first one um, we also have um, um, earliest flight and so we would use this column to order the flights and then make a selection a selection of course will obviously be the first one and then for cheapest flight we'll be looking at the price column and then we'll be looking at we'll order them the results by uh, price and select the first one which will be the lowest price uh, so that's all uh, I think that can be said about the updates to the reports compared to um, the previous report uh, the previous project so in fact as a test scenario um, if we were to pick um, the cheapest flight um, with nighttime flight we would hope that it will be United Airlines and so if we were to go back and test that United Airlines um, so we go City Singapore to um, our flights we want the cheapest flight uh, night flight we selected and we want the cheapest flight and see we have United Airlines and that's twelve dollars and ninety cents um, so that's that as far as that is concerned so we now see how our, our application works and how the reports are generated so what is now left is to demonstrate how the application is written now just like our previous uh, application uh, that generated reports um, we did have um, the same database uh, the data was in two tables we had uh, the S flight and they had the SP fly and then we picked a couple of columns now one departure from the earlier project is that we um, picked uh, we also selected the period field which tells us whether it's nighttime or daytime um, actually uh, looking at the table it provides enough information information for us to understand uh, the contents of the table so if you were to double click on SPFLI like I did it would load the fields or the columns in the SP flight table and so if we look at it we see the carrier ID connection ID city from city to um, something else Something else we could do is um, we could try and see if we can pull up information on the airlines. So what I've done is um, if we were to look at the data, we're looking at the data browser now. We're looking at airlines fall from all the way from American Airlines to United. And then if we were to execute, we'll have a table. Now, this is the database we are querying. This is the table of information we have. And so we could use this as a way of verifying that um, the tables we are generating are actually correct. And so here we have that um, from um, American Airlines, this is Air Canada, this is. Um, Canada also and uh, so we have a whole bunch of flights and uh, this is United Airlines and then we have the cities and we have uh, the destination airport which we really didn't capture and the departure times and uh, yes this tells us this gives us a value of zero or one telling us that um, it's a day flight or it's a night flight uh, so this is pretty much a uh, raw data uh, which is not really very helpful if you're trying to help somebody book a flight and which is why we have uh, 
um, application to help filter out the information that is needed. And so without much ado, um, I will simply click on this icon which shows the object list. I like to call it the object explorer. And this shows you all the components of our application. Um, very interesting stuff. Uh, but to all intents and purposes, uh, we would like to curtail uh, interest to the screens, showing that as, um, our application has three screens, 100, 200, and 300. Uh, the GUI status, we have three of them, Dyna Pro, Dyna Pro 1, and Dyna Pro 3. And then the GUI title. So for each screen, screen 1, screen 2, screen 3, they all have titles on the screens, and this is where we create them. Um, creating um, these objects is quite trivial. You simply right click and click on create. Now, um, it, it's worthy of note that a screen is a parent and a GUI is an element in a screen. And similarly, a title is an element in a GUI or a screen. And so we couldn't go about creating a GUI status without creating a screen. That's the hierarchy. Um, although for some reason um, they should have been nested, but they aren't. But anyways, that is SAP for you. Um, many things in SAP I really do not know why they implement it that way, but hey, it works. And so in the next uh, uh, section of our presentation, we'll take a look at... A closer look at our logic um, again for simplicity um, we are looking at um, over 500 lines of code and there is no way I can explain 500 lines of code without somebody nodding off so what I will do is I'll draw attention to how this application was implemented and uh, possible challenges that one might face in the process and um, uh, I hope you will join me in the next presentation. Thank you.